Hey there guys, it's old mate I read Reddit, back at it again with some more entitled parent stories. Today's stories are extra meme with a side of more shrimps on that barbie. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride, fellas and sheilas. I hope you love all of them. I've read a lot of these stories, and I finally decided to make my own account and share my experience with one in particular entitled parent and entitled kid. Okay, so a little backstory. I used to work at McDonald's when I was a teenager. I'm also deaf, but I read lips. I developed bacterial meningitis and became fully deaf at the age of 12. I can still speak since I learned to speak before I became deaf, and most of the customers I got there were very understanding. Except one. I was working front counter that day, as I usually did, so I was basically in charge of inside customers. This was the easiest position for me, as I could see the customers and read their lips. A middle-aged lady and her 9 to 10 year old son walk in, and I say, Hi, welcome to McDonald's, while signing at the same time. She doesn't look up, and is instead looking down at her phone, so I can't see her lips, and I can't understand what she's saying. So I explain, Um, excuse me ma'am, I'm deaf and I read lips, can you look up for me? She rolls her eyes, and I clearly see she says, why would they let an invalid work the front counter? I am appalled by her behavior, but just try to pretend like I didn't see it. I smile and say, what can I get started for you today? She starts to patronize me by speaking very, very slowly, which, fun fact, actually makes it 1,000 times harder to understand what you're saying. I want a diet coca. Okay, is that all? And a happy meal. Now all of our drinks are a dollar no matter the size, but you have to pay for a Happy Meal toy. We don't just give them out for free. I ring her up and she's shocked. She demands to know why I'm discriminating against her son and forcing them to pay for a Happy Meal toy. I really don't want to cause any trouble, and I wish I could say that I told her where she could shove it, but I ended up just giving her the toy for free. I thought that I had avoided conflict, but oh boy, I was wrong. I told her the total was $1.06, and after she paid, I handed her a large cup and motioned for the guy behind her to move forward. She waves a hand in my face and points to the drink cup. Ah, <sighs> yes ma'am. You never got me my drink. Now, I just thought she didn't see the machines behind her, so I pointed to the drink machine and said, Oh, there's a drink station behind you where you can fill up your drink. I kid you not, word for word, she said, That's your job! Do I look like I work for McDonald's? My jaw hit the fudge and floor. I had never had someone be so rude in my entire life. I ended up telling her that when you come inside, you fill up your own drinks because of sanitary reasons. But when she kept on pushing at me, I ended up just using our drive through drink machine to give her the Diet Coke. While I'm making the drink, my co-worker taps me on the shoulder, and this is the reason that this is in the entitled parents tag. I see her son making fun of me to his mum by pretending to sign, and in just in general being an idiot. His mum didn't punish him or tell him off. Instead, she encouraged him and started to make fun of me with him. I went to the back and ended up bawling my eyes out. I felt incredibly embarrassed, and like I'd made a fool of myself by having a disability. I turned in my two weeks notice about a week later, and haven't worked in fast food since. And to everyone reading this, please be kind to people, especially your fast food workers. It's a tough job even if you don't have any disability. And if you see people with disabilities working and trying to make a living, please be patient and help us out by just letting us do our thing and making us feel welcome. Thank you. I have worked at a telecommunication provider for a number of years. My role is as a sales associate in a storefront, so we are customer facing. We sell phones and plans, but also handle customer service and billing inquiries, and technical support. I have so many entitled parent stories, but this one was the most outrageous I've encountered. Happened a few years ago. The basic information here, a family, entitled dad, quiet mum, and embarrassed teen, come into the store, and my dad immediately started going off, madder than a cut snake. Apparently we've scanned him, and he not only refuses to pay the most recent bill, 
but he's going to have us all fired if we don't fix his issue immediately. I'm not too phased by the yelling and swearing, as it's not uncommon in this job, but I know my co-worker doesn't handle conflict well, and my manager is on lunch. So I step up and try to calm him down, directing him and his family to take a seat at my workstation so I can have a look at the account. I confirm that this account is for the son's mobile phone. The bill should be about $50 per month, but this guy's been charged over $3,000, which shouldn't be possible as he was on an unlimited calling plan and hadn't exceeded his data. I let them know that I'll be a moment while I checked out why this is. Turns out, it's almost entirely content services. These are generally voting lines, competition lines, content and game downloads, sometimes scams, reverse calling, in-app purchases, all that kind of stuff. This is a service offered and charged by a third party. The bill doesn't have the name of the company on it, but I can see the number. It's been called dozens of times in this month. I pointed this out to the dad, who promptly loses his crap. At this point, he's yelling something to the effect of, This is some kind of bullcrap fudge and scam! You people are thieves! I am not paying this, and if you don't credit the account, I'll make sure you lose your job. I'll have the fudge and government crawling up your butts. I'll have the fudge and store closed down. Probably burned to the ground too, who knows. I wait until he's out of breath and calmly continue, saying that in most cases, if it was a genuine error, then the company that provided the content services and so charged the account, a third party provider, not our company, can refund the charges. Unfortunately, because our company did not provide the content, we are unable to issue a refund. I explained that it's like asking for your bank for a refund of a purchase from a department store. The bank can't provide a refund as they didn't provide the service. The son at this point is vehemently denying that he ever used the service. The entitled dad starts raving again, same stuff as before, but also demanding that I pay the $3,000 bill. I obviously refuse and tell him that unfortunately, if his son used a content service, he will have to pay for it. That's how the world works. Otherwise, he has to call the company who charged him. The entitled dad and the quiet mother both also insist that their precious teen wouldn't ever do anything wrong. Oh my god, he is such a good boy. Clearly, I'm in the wrong, etc, etc. Unfortunately though, I simply can't put the credit onto the account. Only the over the phone billing reps can credit, and for that much money, you'd need a third level manager to do it. We talk in circles for a while, while the dad's getting madder. And madder! Eventually, he exclaims that it's probably a fake number anyway, and tries to call it from the teenager's phone, trying to prove his son had never called the number before. It rings, it's on speaker, and then a sultry female voice answers. Sexy voice says, Hi, E.T.'s name. Oh my god, where have you been? I've missed pleasuring you so much. There's a stunned silence as we all realize this teen has been calling a sex hotline. And the dad hangs up. The mother looks like she might faint. The son turns bright red and the dad goes super pale. There is no denying it. She used his name. I'm trying so hard not to burst out laughing. This ballsy 14 year old has blown nearly $3,000 on a hotline. The dad actually grabs his son's ear and drags him out of the store. The mum follows. Neither of them say anything as they leave, and I never saw them again. TLDR, parents blow up at me for their son's phone bill. Turns out it's $3,000 calling us a very cool hotline. So this is the story of a kid that is so angry of dying on a PvP server and calls his mother saying that I am a hacker and crap. It went like this. So I started looking for a group on Xbox and this kid showed up. So I invited him for the game and he kept saying, level me up, level me up, level me up, repeatedly. I say to him, look, let me make this fair for you. I will put you on my level so it's balanced, which is level 23. Okay, but can you give me my weapons? No, just level up yourself and craft it. But I want it now, I want it! Look kid, if you keep begging for weapons, I'll have to kick you out. Then he started playing by the rules until we met the south part of the map. Now I will kill you! 
So naturally, as any sane person does, I shoot him several times until he dies. And he goes, What? You are hacking! I say to him, No, I just have a better weapon than you. Next time I see you, I will kick your butt and loot you. Ha, <laughs> keep praying, kid. After 20 minutes, I saw him again, so I just killed him again. Stop! He didn't let me hit you once! Look, it's your fault not being fast, kiddo. After that, I could hear him calling his mum in the background, and that's where the fun begins. I was just sitting there waiting for him to come, and he came back with his mum after four minutes. Hello? Who am I speaking with? Um, Captain Galaxius. I said it as a joke. It's a really funny joke. Stop that nonsense and explain to me what happened between you and my son. He just keeps complaining about dying. It's his fault for not being fast enough. He is lying. He's hacking and stealing my stuff. What? No, I'm not, you little brat. How dare you speak to my son like that? Give him his stuff back and apologize now. What if I don't feel like it? If you don't, I will call the cops. Lady, you're crazy. No, I am not crazy. What did you do to my son? It is unacceptable. I blocking you now. It's better like that anyway. I can even smell your bad breath from here. Then she blocked me and sent me messages on Xbox saying, we will report you. Don't think you're going to get away so easily. I just deleted the message and went back minding my own business. And well, this is my story. Bye. Okay, so some background. I was adopted when I was five months old. I have two very loving mothers and five amazing sisters also adopted. As far as I knew, my birth mum was some businesswoman who didn't want to raise me. This story takes place when I was 12, so the facts may be a bit fuzzy, but here we go. One day in January, my older mother received a phone call from a woman claiming to be my birth mother, asking if she could visit me. My younger mum figured, why not? thinking she might just want to be a good person. So they set up a date to meet me at a local park. We go there early to wait for them to show up. She is very pregnant and the guy next to her was in a suit. We meet and everything's fine, if a bit awkward until she says, So, would you like to come live with us? Uh, no, I don't want to. I was impatient and wanted to play. And I ran off with my sister until I hear my younger mother yell at my birth mum. You are not taking my daughter! Birth mother says, I'm her real mother. I'm taking her home. You most certainly are not. She's our daughter. My birth mother screams at her and goes, I don't give two craps what you think. I'm taking her. That's when she gets up and starts running to me, grabbing my hand and yanking it. And that's when my older mother tackles her, former military and very muscled, pinning her to the ground easily. The husband called the police my mum, yelling to let her go. A few minutes later, Two officers show up after giving our statement. Birth mother claimed they had kidnapped me and she was taking me home. They arrested both my older mother and my birth mother and for two days after, until showing them my birth certificate and proof of adoption, they let my older mother go since she was defending me and arrested my birth mother for attempted kidnapping and child endangerment. I heard from her for a couple of months afterwards in letters she sent, then after that nothing ever heard or saw from her again, not that I wanted to. I find out later that she moved to the United States, and that is the last I heard of her, and that was three years ago. I hope I got all the facts right, and I guess, thanks for reading it. Hello, I have this rescue mutt that I adopted after witnessing how a car just abandoned her on the street, while still a pupper. Because of these circumstances, I have no way of knowing how her life was before I adopted her, but she seems to be pretty happy living with me. I let her roam free around the house, and even sleep on my bed. Usually, she's pretty social whenever someone comes to visit. So, I was at the vet one day. I had an appointment for just a bi-monthly checkup, see if she's growing healthy, etc. While I was in the waiting room, this kid comes and shoves a small car toy on my dog's ear. This scares her so much that she pees. So naturally, I carried my dog to comfort her. She was still pretty young at this moment. The young kid's whining about how I won't let him play with my dog, and I explained as patiently as I could. Look, kid. The way you used your toy with my dog made her feel uneasy. You have to be respectful and kind to other dogs because they're just like us. Enter, dun dun dun, entitled mother. The mother starts complaining about how I was being selfish and not letting a mutt play with her dog. She said it as if the fact my dog was a mutt somehow lowered her value as a living being. 
I explained to the mother that her kid shoved a car toy in my dog's ear. To which the entitled mother just replied, So what? Your dog isn't well trained. Dogs should be able to withstand anything kids do to them. Young kids just think of dogs as toys. I was going to say something when the vet came out of the office to see what was going on. Apparently, the entitled mother came to adopt a rescue dog from the vet. To which the vet replies, Unless I see commitment from your part to educate your kid on respecting animals, I'm afraid I cannot let you adopt any pet. Most of the pets we have for adoption here come from abusive households, and we won't let them be adopted by someone who sees them as objects for her child to toy with. At this point, the entitled mother was just furious. I promised that my son that I would get him a dog if he studies hard. He deserves it. To which the vet replied, no pet deserves to be threatened like a toy by a kid while the parent fails to educate the kid about respecting animals. My decision is final. You cannot adopt any pet from here. The kid was crying, but neither the vet or any employee or myself cared at all. It was clear that the mother just wanted to give the dog to her kid as if it was a new toy. The mother complained about how he ruined the kid's childhood and left extremely upset. Obligatory, I'm on mobile and don't know how to format very well. This happened when I was 7, I'm 27 now, and I won't remember most of the details. Also, it's kinda long. Also, I'm a guy. This story is about what happened to me when I was 7. Anyway, I was living in Seattle with my parents in one of those townhouse complexes. One of those places that basically is just a bunch of houses connected to one another in a row. And my neighbours were good people for the most part. Except for one family member. The dad was cool and actually had a head on his shoulders. Thank fudge and god. The mother and the son, however... You know the lingo. Entitled mother, entitled kid, awesome dad, dad, which is my dad, the goober telling me the tale, which is me. The son is a piece of work. He bullied me relentlessly and constantly bugged me and my sister when we were playing. Today my sister was at a friend's, so I was playing by myself in the complex's playground when the entitled kid shows up. He's around 13 at the time, and he's just coming into puberty, I guess, and decided to attempt to worm his way closer to me. This is where it might get triggering, and honestly this is hard to talk about. The kid tries calling a truce with me, and asks to play with me, swearing on every higher power that he means well. Me being a stupid kid believes him, because I just want an excuse to not be bullied. We start monkeying around on the playset, and that's when he brings up the idea of a game. Again, me being a stupid kid gets curious at the idea of a game, despite being wary of his past actions. A little background about the area surrounding my complex. There's a small wooded area to behind the play area, with three busy streets framing the whole area. Honestly, that's the most trees I've ever seen in that concrete jungle. This is the area he proposed his little game. We go back to these woods, and go to the thickest part of the trees, and he tells me to close my eyes and open my mouth, after telling me to get on my knees. And yeah, he did exactly what you think he did. And I bit it. HARD. Being a kid, I didn't like what was suddenly in my mouth, and decided to bite it, not knowing what had just happened. He screamed and punched me right in the top of my head and knocked me out. I remember being picked up by my dad, and was brought home, and he was ticked. I had blood going down the side of my head, and I was confused about what was happening. Info he gave me later. The rest of the story is from information that my dad told me. He apparently finished cooking dinner and was calling for me. Knowing I had a history of climbing the nearby trees, because again, stupid kid, he went looking for me and found me bleeding and unconscious. He managed to wake me up and asked what had happened, to which all I could say was the entitled kid's name. He brought me home and stormed over to the kid's house, banging on the door, furious that his only son had been hurt, not knowing what to expect. This is how the conversation went according to my dad. Ah, what the fudge do you want? I'm tending to my son. He's hurt, so this had better be good. You're dang fudge and right this is good, and I want an explanation as to why my seven-year-old was bleeding and unconscious in the woods, and you're saying that your son did it? The entitled mother clearly very ticked too. What in the absolute fudge are you talking about? That animal bit my son's pe- I said that he got what he deserved. The dad growing even more angry and yelling, What in the heck was your 13-year-old son Pee-Pee doing in my 7-year-old's mouth? Shouldn't I be asking you that, you piece of crap? We all watch that little weirdo you call a son playing by himself. 
or what that little crap he calls his sister. We all know that this is something that Fudge and Child would do. I'm still confused as to how someone can be this stupid. My dad was so furious, and he told her that he'll be back when he's less ticked off, so he wouldn't cold knock her out and end up regretting it and goes home to tend to me. An hour later, after dad found out I'm fine and don't need to go to the hospital, the awesome dad shows up at our door. He's wondering why his wife is furious and why my dad needed to puff on out of there before he knocked a jerk out. He explained what happened and the rest I heard from the living room. Awesome Dad says, Why was my son's pee-pee in your son's mouth? That doesn't make any sense. My thoughts exactly, but your wife thinks that it's my seven-year-old's fault that this happened. Again, seven years old. What seven-year-old is thinking about trying that crap? The Awesome Dad says, I think we need to go home and have a chat with my wife and son. The Awesome Dad went home and had a screaming match with his wife for five hours. We could hear it over my Nickelodeon shows, four houses down. He comes back asking we don't press charges against his son. My dad agreed, so long as the kid never bothers me again. The awesome dad agrees and goes home. We moved a month later, but the family got a divorce and the dad kept the boy. Anyways, that's the Entitled Parent story and holy frick does it feel good to get that off my chest. So this is the story of an entitled mother blaming our tech department for a free-to-play game not working. Now for those of you that need more context, part 1's here. But just in case, here is some context. We sold a new gaming computer to this entitled kid a few weeks ago. Custom built, based on what he wanted to use it for. Three or so weeks prior to this, the entitled mother came into the shop complaining that the computer was useless and broken because it wouldn't play this specific game. It was Ghost Recon Online. It was during the early period of the release, and it was riddled with bugs. I managed to fix it then. This brings me to this day. Three weeks after the initial fix, our shop had fluctuating foot traffic. Some days we had no customers, some days we have too many. It was the start of the new month, everyone had their salaries paid in. This means our shop was very busy. We barely had enough reps to deal with customers. We only had three people working on any given day. I was busy talking to a customer at the tech desk with a laptop that had a lot of issues. From mails not working, to USB ports not working, to even blue screens of death. In walks Entitled Mother. No Entitled Kid, no PC. I thought the Entitled Mother may have just been shopping around for new games, or a keyboard or something for the Entitled Kid. Entitled Mother walks up to the tech desk, to which I just quickly greeted with a Hi Entitled Mother, I'll be with you in a minute. The Entitled Mother stood there. Arms crossed, tapping her foot as if I was inconveniencing her by talking to a customer. About five minutes after I booked in the laptop, printed the necessary work orders, the Entitled Mother looks at me with this FINALLY look. Entitled Mother then proceeded to ask me, Um, I've been waiting for forever. Are you gonna come pick up this computer from my car or not? I just looked with a confused face. The Entitled Mother then told me she had phoned the shop. My work colleague answered, and she said that she was on her way to drop the Entitled Kid's computer. AGAIN. She had apparently been parked, waiting, outside our shop, in the disabled parking spot for 15 minutes. To anyone that doesn't know, we have a disabled parking stop right by our front door. We have been so busy that my colleagues afterwards had to apologise because we didn't have the time to look outside for a car to pick up a computer, and he got too busy to inform me the Entitled Mother was on her way. Customers did this often, but I do have a few more stories about stuff like this. So on to the computer. I went outside to fetch the machine. The Entitled Mother annoyed again asking why the game doesn't work. After a few minutes, and an Entitled Mother trying to explain what her son told her, I said I can figure out and have a look. She then knew to ask what the labour cost would be due to the previous event. Knowing how stingy she is, I told her no more than $20. She seemed fine with this IF it was the game's fault again this time. This time? Please, lady, the computer's working fine. I have the same issues with the game at home. After printing out papers, she left. This is where the fun begins. We couldn't access the account for some reason. I just remember having difficulties opening Steam. At this point, I just thought that he forgot the details, and we did the whole Steam password reset theme. After an hour of no results, I write an email to Steam support asking for help with the account. The next day, Steam wrote back with something along the lines of, 
This Steam account has violated the terms of service and is therefore banned. It was a lengthy email detailing why the account got banned and that it cannot be retrieved. I was shocked at this email. The entitled kid tried to add cracked Steam games to the Steam library. There were no actual bought games in this library and I saw the icons on the desktop for a few games that cost well over $20 and also bought aim hacking software for Ghost Recon Online. Knowing now why the game wasn't working, I called the entitled mother to ask her and the entitled kid to come to the shop so I can explain to her why the game isn't working. This didn't seem like something I could say over the phone. I don't know exactly why his Steam account itself was banned. Usually a VAC ban only affects the game you cheated in, but I think he may have even tried to crack Steam to get games for free. I don't have a lot of experience with Steam bans, so forgive me for being a bit hazy on the details. This was around 5 years ago after all. A while later, they both entered the store. As this was a Sunday, it was a lot quieter. I had printed out the reasons I got from Steam. I told her that the entitled kid had been using illegal software that he also bought with her credit card without permission, and that Steam had banned his account. I handed her the printed out email so she could confirm that I wasn't lying or making any excuses. The look in the entitled kid's face was priceless. At this point he knew he royally fudged up. He had screwed up. His face went white. The entitled mother turned over to him to ask what this is all about and he just nodded and said, sorry. She was livid, asking how he could just use her credit card without her permission. How could he buy illegal software? How could he lie to her face about all of it? At this point, the entitled kid was bawling his eyes out. This is where I started getting some respect for the entitled mother. She didn't even complain about the labor price. She in turn asked us to keep his PC in the shop for the whole week, so the kid could learn a lesson and clear out all of its illegal software. She was even fine with paying for the extra labor hours. At the end, we did a full new Windows install, as the cracks and hacks had tons of viruses included. So we spent a lot more time working on the computer. Unfortunately, in the next story, the entitled mother went back to being her entitled jerky self again, refusing to pay $35 for two days of full labor for two tablets, her home computer and entitled kids gaming rig, also. Alright guys, I hope you liked that one. That was a bit of a bumpy ride, that last post. Uh, tell me what you think of it in the comments, and subscribe if you liked it. Thank you for sticking around, and I'll see you guys next episode. Bye!